I like doing these uh, little talks in my car and I talk into the camera and uh, the last couple videos I made it was kind of like I think I was defending myself and uh, but I, I, I actually like kind of like doing these so if you guys like these videos let me know and I'll keep doing them if you prefer I don't do them I that's that's fine uh, because I, I I'm taking it in a, a little bit different direction uh, with all the uh, the negative stuff that's been going on it uh, I think it's mostly playful and I'm fine with that as long as it's playful uh, but I, I did get a comment uh, where the, one of the guys that you know that's been trolling me he said uh, he said what did he say he said I was a cock and a, a fake conservative beta male and I thought you know that's a good topic beta male alpha male uh, because I think there's this uh, I think we have it like a, there's a cult of what I call alpha male like what like this is society's got this image of what an alpha male is or what a real man is masculinity and I think that that's uh, I think we got it all wrong and I thought that that would be a good topic of discussion uh, because like society when you say alpha male what do you think of you think of this big muscular meathead that yells and screams and he's got a bad temperament and everybody's afraid of him and it's an intimidating guy and you know you you want to be that guy you, you want to walk into a place and you want everybody to just instantly respect you or fear you or you know you're not going to mess with me it's a it's a it's kind of a shell it's an it's a fake exterior it's not who you uh, generally speaking even the some of the most mean looking evil people that i know underneath it all they're not really like that uh if they are mean if they do puff their chest up and throw their weight around that's usually a defense mechanism uh and if you actually get to know them they're usually quite thoughtful introspective and and they have a lot of fears and that's all fear-based like anytime we puff our chests up, anytime we try to intimidate someone, anytime we try to bully somebody, anytime we pick on somebody, that's all fear. There's there's nothing alpha about that. If anything, that's uh, that shows that there's some really deep underlying issues that need to be addressed. Because if somebody was really okay with themselves, uh, and I'm not saying I am, I still have a lot of issues if somebody was really okay with themselves, they wouldn't be acting like that. When I first got into construction, um, when I got out of the military, uh, I thought, I, I used to watch the superintendents and they were always yelling and screaming at everybody. And everybody was afraid to not listen to them. Uh, they would get their work done and come around, oh, here comes the boss. And everybody get to work. And they were all working as fast as they could and the sentiment that everyone always shared as soon as he left was, God, I hate that guy. I'm miserable. I hate my job. I hate working for that fill in the blank. You know, and then he'd come by and he goes, you all working Saturday. If you don't come in Saturday, consider it your resignation. And I went, oh, God damn it. You know, well, you, you coming in tomorrow? Of course I'm coming in tomorrow. You know, I got, I got kids to feed. I can't not come in. And they went, God, I hate working for this guy. And I can't wait to just find a different job. And uh, I thought that's how it was supposed to be. They, you know, they even say you, you've got to be mean with these guys. you got to tell them what to do. If you don't, they'll never listen to you. They won't respect you. They're not going to fall in line. I thought, well, I don't know. I've never had, didn't have to do that in the Marine Corps. I mean, yeah, we had discipline and military bearing and all that. And, you know, you're some ah, Lance Corporal and all that nonsense. But, you know, underneath it all when you got to know your your brothers in your unit i mean we all talk to each other on a first name basis and we even my staff sergeant he he called me by my first name and when there's when we were behind closed doors and we didn't have prying eyes you know we we let our military bearing down and that's not how we got anything done so why would it be like that in the civilian world and uh that's what i did you know when i when i uh became foreman for the first time on a job i was always yelling and screaming at everybody and I thought, man, I know, you know, look at me, I'm awesome. And then I came to find out that everybody hated my guts and 
it kind of bummed me out a little when I found out about it, you know, when they told me how they really felt. All right, so fast forward a few years later, I got to work for some really awesome superintendents. One was named Jody Dodge, and he's one of, he, this guy built half of Vegas. He worked under the, under Wynn. I don't know if you guys know that name, but there's the, the Wynn uh, Casino, Resort Casino, and then there's the Encore. And, uh, just, you know, Wynn had some scandals come out about him, about sexual harassment and whatever, but, you know, that's really besides the point. The, the fact of the matter is that the man did build have the valley. And then there's W.A. Richardson, uh, the gentleman I work for, and he's another one that's built half of Vegas. Um, he's one of the bigger names. He's built many casinos. And these guys, everybody tells, talks about how much they love like uh, the superintendent that works for them. Jody was awesome. There's uh, there's Glenn Barnett. There's uh, John Woodruff. Uh, he's the superintendent that runs all of uh, Richardson's jobs. And they, they're all real down-to-earth, quiet, soft-spoken. And they speak with authority. And uh, they are clear. And if you mess up and you get called into their office, it's more like a disappointed father than somebody who's going to bite your head off. He'd sit you down and say, you know what you did wrong, right? And you just, you want to, you, you love this man working for this guy so much that you feel terrible that you had to, assuming you're working in good faith. Now, if you're one of those guys that's trying to just, you know, collect a paycheck or, you, you know, you're not doing your job and you're not there for the right reasons, you're not going to last long because they'll get rid of you. Because I have heard him on a couple of occasions, like, we'd be walking with guys that were just didn't want to be there and he would straight out ask him, like, hey, you want to be here? And boy, you know, he put him on the spot. Well, that's the, uh, that's the assertiveness. So these men, what are the qualities they all had in common? They were all calm. They were all assertive. They were kind. I never heard them say an unkind word about another person. That's not to say they didn't criticize other people. And that's not to say they didn't have opinions about some of the trades and then coworkers that they had that were, you know, maybe considered negative, but it was generally, um, it had, it was directly, uh, related to the work that was being done it wasn't that they had a negative opinion about them as people they wouldn't talk crap about them like oh i hate that bastard you know whatever they would say oh man that guy doesn't you know he would they would stay usually keep it factual like oh he does bad work or i don't want him back on this job site because he's his, the quality of his work is poor or he doesn't uh, have good attention to detail but they didn't talk negatively about him as a person uh, so there was, that's another thing that they all had in common is they didn't talk crap about people behind their backs. They didn't participate in gossip. They were all strong, assertive men. And you found that the people that worked under them, I wanted to emulate these guys. So I started acting like they did. And that's, uh, that's kind of how I stuck around and how I moved up the ladder. I found, you know, like, I don't know if it was because of that, or maybe it is because I am generally non-confrontational you know i'm not out there starting fights with people and things like that i'm not try abrasive to work around and i usually had try to have a cheery disposition and i also like to be polite with everybody maybe that's why they kept me around also the fact that i was always on time and i never said no to anything which actually could be a sign of weakness if you're not able to draw healthy boundaries that's a that's that's definitely a sign of somebody who hasn't found their voice and you need, that's something that you need to work on. So, wrap it back to me. Where am I at with everything? Because, you know, I, re I initially opened this conversation up by saying the guy called me a uh, beta male liberal or whatever. Uh, and I don't, like, I'm not, if, if your definition of alpha male is somebody that tries to act tough and tries to intimidate people and tries to be argumentative and talks crap about you behind your back and, and does character assassination, participates in, um, you know, childish games where, you know, you like being a bully. No, I'm not. You're, I mean, you're absolutely right. I just, no, I don't want to be that person either. Like, I would never want to, I'm not trying to be that person, and I would be more than happy to accept your designation as a calm, quiet, assertive man who is tender and loves his family and his kids and 
and uh, I think that's awesome. If, that, if that's beta, then I'm beta. That's cool, man. Um, uh, you know, and we're all works in progress. Uh, the reason why I would never, uh, I, I've asked, some people have asked if I would train them. And I would never charge money for that because I don't consider myself competent enough to charge to train. I try to share what I have freely and I, I try to keep it for things that have worked for me because I don't know enough to say what would work for other people. I can only tell you my personal experience. I can only share my strength and I can only share my hope. And I, and if it's something that could work for you, I'm happy to, to impart that upon you. But uh, I, you know, I just, I've, the, the most I've learned at the age of 47 is that I'm an idiot and I can barely manage my own life. So, I, I'm not an expert. I just know a few things here and there, you know. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I have, a, what is it, body dysmorphia? And when I look in the mirror, I don't like what I see, historically. And that's why I've always struggled so hard to make sure that I, you know, that I, you know, I work, the harder I work, the more muscular I get, the leaner I get, the more, it's, it's just, it never ends. It never is enough. And I had to kind of look, get to a point where, you know, I used to hate myself and now I just don't like myself. And now, you know, now I'm starting to like myself and now I'm pretty much okay with myself but old habits die hard you know it's uh, so one of these days I'm gonna have to stop powerlifting maybe sooner than later you know I'm getting beat up I don't know how much longer I'm gonna do this for as I've stated in other videos um, am I gonna be okay with that am I ever gonna get to a point where I, I just don't you know maybe I shouldn't keep doing this forever I don't know we'll see when that day comes and we'll have to make an adjustment I mean I had the same problem when I got out of the service. I was so heavily identified with that. With that, you know, I'm still wearing the hat. That was hard to let go of, but I eventually did. Um, and then, you know, I'll have to find something else to fulfill myself and find meaning. And I, I don't know. I imagine that's a struggle for all men. But uh, I don't know. I just thought it would be an interesting topic of a discussion, and hopefully, it'll start a conversation. And if you guys don't like these videos, let me know. If you do like them, let me know. Um, I'm open. So anyway, that's all I got.